Uh, welcome everybody to the Chain Breakers series. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we have with us Kiki Metsu from Um Thank you Kiki Metsu for um, allowing for this interview to happen. Pleasure. I really Pleasure. appreciate it. Um, so I guess we should just get right into business. <laughs> Attempts not to break chains of poverty For your mind there's a true sense of liberty Slave tanking, read back the history You may face hunger but you get away We all have dreams but you live away uh, Blast and tears will see you through You can test the system or you can pick it you You may get out, well, that's up to you As she said, my name is Kitumetsu Mumakwe I am currently the Chief Executive Officer of the Steel Tube Export Association of South Africa uh, this, this, this association is basically an association that has a private-public partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry. And its sole goal is basically to look for uh, competitive export markets for local steel tube and pipe manufacturers in South Africa at a very upstream level and also at a very downstream level. I've been in this position for two and a half years. Uh, prior to joining uh, the association, I used to work for um, uh, Max Steel, Max Steel Services Center South Africa, basically the biggest steel distributing company on the African continent. And I think that's where everything began for me. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to learn about the steel industry. This was 2008 when I came into the industry as um, a trainee, basically. Now, how it happened is that they were looking uh, to transform the industry. And, uh, you know, traditionally, this is a white industry and therefore they needed more black people to come into the industry and therefore they, they were targeting uh, black graduates. Mm. Uh, at that period of my life, I had just, um, just done my post-grad, I wasn't working at that point. So I registered my, um, my CV with different um, agencies and I get a call this one time. Hey, we'd like to see you, we like your CV, um, your opportunity is with a steel company. Steel? name and I'm not a steel person I'm like the stereotype was grease and conti suits and boots and whatever and I'm thinking no I'm man ruin these precious no, things look at these. And I'm like no man I'm like she's boy Kelly yeah you know what I mean <laughs> I can't be seen in that environment oh my god but anyway I thought well this is the first opportunity I've had so mm. hey, let me hear them out so I went through uh, the series of about three interviews which all went very well I seem to have a way with interviews um you know, I think, I think it's a confidence thing. Mm. But they all worked out well, and eventually I went for my interview at Max Steel. So I got to Max Steel, yeah, industrial area, some chimneys, so five trees on the squatter camps. I'm like, yeah, huh? what have I got myself into? <laughs> anyway, I kept on driving. And then I got to this, um, to the company. It is massive, it's a massive, massive company, uh, Max Steel Germiston South, basically the biggest branch in Africa. Mm. I get there, I had my interview with the admin manager at the time, he was basically going to be my mentor. Mm. And you know, the, the interview was very informal. It was very informal, we talked about a lot of issues, you know, political issues, racial issues, um, a whole array of uh, issues that were pertinent to um, South African uh, economy then, you know what mm. I mean? Uh, I remember, so the World Cup was coming up, so there was going to be a lot of infrastructure development, you know, we also tapped yeah. into that, and how Max Steel was actually going to play a role in terms of supplying steel into some right. of these projects. So it was a very open-ended sort of conversation, and you know, before you knew it, um, you guys are having an interview, but at a, in a very informal space, mm. and you know, it made me relax, I was able to talk about um, what was on my mind, and I thought, I thought he appreciated how liberal I was about things. And that interview went fantastically well, and then um, literally a week and a half later, I was offered the, um, the post to start as a trainee. So a three-year intensive program where you learn um, all the departments within the company, and also what also happens in the sister companies that basically service different parts of the steel industry. So the idea was that in three years, you would have this uh, well-rounded consumer professional who's black, in the steel industry who's competent and 
any opportunity that, can, that, that comes up, he would be able to apply type of thing. And that's exactly what happened. So after three years of intensive training, the opportunity started opening up, you know, people were taking posts and so mm. forth. And I thought I did well in finance. My background is more marketing. I did a BCom in marketing and a postgraduate just general business management. Because at that point, I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to be. You know what I mean? So everybody was doing marketing. If you're either studying marketing or you're studying accounting, now they get, ah, we're thinking there's a bit of creative spark in me. Let me go for marketing rather. Did that whole marketing. And I started loving it. I mm. started loving it. Can I just pause you there? I think you're very lucky in the sense that you ended up loving it. In this day and age, there's a mentality that, you know what, you have to figure it out and then get to university knowing exactly yes. what you need yes. to do. But that was not necessarily the case for you, but <laughs> it worked out perfectly. No, I could, I could have literally stood in line and asked every other person, what are you studying? Oh, what are you studying? What are you studying? What are you studying? What are you studying? So whatever was popular, like, yeah, maybe I can do that. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. But. One thing, one thing was for sure, I said, listen, I've made my bed and I'm going to see it through. Mm. Luckily, I started enjoying it and I saw it through, you know, I saw it through. So, jump into Max Steel. So, after the intensive program, I ended up in finance mm. because the numbers were speaking to me. The creativity side of it, well, Max Steel's marketing department isn't huge uh, because we always, we, always, we always say in the steel industry that uh, steel sells itself. You, know? mm. you either want it or you don't want it. You don't have... Put, yeah, you can't put bows and whatever. <laughs> you can glamorize it. You know, it's rough. It's <laughs> it's industrial. You either want it or you don't want it. And that's it. Um, yeah. So I ended up in finance. Numbers were speaking to me, and I did very well. So and you don't. You didn't have a background. No, I didn't have a background in finance. I mean, you did accounting, yeah, like your BCom. Mm. So you, you're a pretty good idea, but you didn't specialize in it. And so I did that for about two years. And then another post came up, um, they called it a loss control supervisor. So what the loss control supervisor basically does is that they do operational audits on branches. So I would basically have an opportunity to go to all the Max Steel branches and do for a week do an operational audit. A bit of finance, but more, more, more operations. Mm -hmm. Applied for it, did the interview. So, you know, had my way in here, really. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, there was a run, I had a streak of interviews yeah, that all went well, you know what I mean? Oh my god! Uh, I aced it. You got the post. That's really nice. Good shot. And then <laughs> the beauty about it is that three three days in uh, in a month, you're out there. So one week at a branch, next time you come back, off to another branch, and then only a week and in the office. So Cape Town, Durban, all over the country. Bloemfontein, nice. Nelspray, Botswana. Wow. You name it, so all over the place, Klexdorf, and then you've got your branches in uh, in Gauteng too. And so, yeah, but so I got... Luckily, that also, um, you sort of tapped into an adventurous side of yes. you while working. Yes, you know, when I was young, you know, I was mm. uh, like, oh, travel. So, you know, it was you in the airport, you in the airport, and you're like, you felt like a jet setter, you're like, ah, you know? <laughs> like the airport is my second home, you know? <laughs> And yeah, I did that for two years. It was fantastic. You know, you got to meet uh, people from all the other different branches. Uh, you built great rapport with them. Mm. Uh, they also helped you a lot. And after two years of doing that, then came another position that was, well, uh, another opening, um, and that was to manage our branch. So Max Steel Trading Polokwane needed a branch manager. So many skills and all that, and all that. I think you've got the competencies. Mm. So I consulted a couple of people within um, in HR, you know, key strategic people, and they said, no, no, okay, go for it, go for it, go for it. I went for it, went through rigorous uh, interview pros, uh, uh, process again. Mm -hmm. and this time, with the uh, CEO. So it's hectic, yeah. hectic. But hey, I nailed it, I nailed it. <laughs> The confidence though. I mean, I think the fact that you nailed all your interviews no. speaks to the fact that you are, you're competent. Yes. But then I think that many people enter into spaces that they are competent enough for, but still can't find it in them to have, to own it. Mm. I think, I think um, a hindrance is maybe anxiety. 
a lot of people are competent but um, anxiety kind of um, takes away yeah. from their confidence so I've always been I've, I've always been relaxed about things I'm like no I know my stuff so when I'm in there I'm just relaxed and just be myself and it's worked you know, it, 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 it's worked very well for me it's, it's not easy I know it's not easy for a lot of people but um, yeah it's that relaxation confidence in what you know the whole I'm just gonna go in there and just be myself and not put too much structure in, um, in in prepping for the yes you prep for the interview but don't make it too rigid yeah. because you know if you with that when you've structured it in such a way and you're not following your structure then everything it comes it, thro- it throws you off it throws yeah. you off you're like, oh, no, no, I'm supposed to have said that I didn't say that uh, you know just, you, you, over, you overcomplicate it mm. but if it's just a, a liberal structure I am I feel like it flow I'm just flow with the interview. I think it goes very well and they actually get to see the true you exactly. you know there's the structured you yeah. and there's the natural you and i think in most interviews people want to see the natural you and once they see the natural you then with Lavana, it doesn't even become a very formal interview it's um it, it, it branches out into something else hmm. now that off to polokwane i go ah what an adventure and like you know I'm the new kid in town, yeah, no, you know, <laughs> got positioning you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my yeah, gosh! Yeah, yeah. Look at a business card. Uh, yes, um, I'm the managing director of Next Two. Oh, 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 oh. You're too young. I don't need this age for you. But for me, it was an amazing opportunity to get a while, you know, for the first time. Um, I've got an opportunity to show true leadership. Whatever I've learned from all other people, I've got now I can practice it. So in Mexico Pulukwane, we uh, we were basically a branch of 22 people. So I had 21 people reporting to me. A phenomenal two and a half years I spent there. And, ask, and you had never managed people before? No, I had never managed people. I had just always worked in groups. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, work in group and report to um, somebody senior. Yeah. So I was most most of the time you're subordinate within mm-hmm. a group. But for the first time, I've, I've been given a responsibility of a whole branch. Do you want people reporting to you? And because it's it's a small branch, you become everything. You know, you're the branch manager, um, you're the HR person, you are operations. You are you are every you are every figurehead, and you've just got people under there. So you even therapist, do something, you your marriage counselor, like, you know everything. People come there with the domestic problem. Yeah. And and you embraced it. I, yeah, I embraced it because um, that's what they expect of you as as a leader. No, 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 I should be able to bring my problems. Is it really though, or was it your leadership? Well, because do you know what? I didn't. Um, I could have said, "Hey, listen, don't bring, don't bring your domestic right. problems here. This is work, whatever." Yeah. Whatever. But I was empathetic. I think I'm very empathetic, and I just said, "Okay, um, let me give you my two cents worth." And but don't quote me on that. So it's, <laughs> I'm young, I'm young. So this is what I think would work. Really. Right. Yeah. And yeah, we, we, we built a solid team and um, so staff turnover reduced because now people were able to relate to sort of their branch managers. So staff turnover um, reduced. Uh, my senior management were happy. Okay, okay. Now at least we've got a stable uh, group of people working at that branch because typically every two months somebody would leave. Oh. So there was no stability. So now for two and a half years, the, the stability, people are happy within their work environment and they actually tell you like, you know, so, 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 you know it feels good for people when people tell you that you brought a difference, you brought a different management style, more consultative, whatever, mm. we can come to you, there's an open door policy. But I want to know where you have never managed people. Now you're going into the space, having to manage them I think there are many um, instances of autocratic leaders and it seems like that's how leadership should be. Now where did you get this thing that no, let's do it in this manner, let's be more consultative, let me be as a boss more empathetic. I think, I think it came from my, my mentor when I got to Max Steel. So I reported to Gretz Catalan Bogan and he was very open was the admin finance manager and he was a very open person you know mm. and 
uh, the way the, the way he structured his leadership was in such a way, you know, open door policy type of thing. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's do more. The more we talk, the more we resolve. That type of thing. Mm. And I think in the same vein, I went into um, that environment like that to say, the more the more we're talking, the more we're getting to know one another. And um, yeah, and we can progress forward. And yeah, that empathy also just played a role. Like always putting yourself in other people's uh, shoes. Well, so if I'm in, the, in, in that person's shoes, what would I do? What would I want from my leader? You know what I mean? Yeah. That type of thing. And I think it's, it's, it's helped me in good stead. Um, you know, being firm, but at the same time fair. And there's a lot of humility that you bring into it. Yeah. And people appreciate that. So now people look at you as, you know, an enabler and like somebody that's just going to finish you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Hmm. The learning lessons are. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership skills, hey! Yeah, yeah. And then after, after, after about two years there, then I got an opportunity to come back to Johannesburg and take up a, a finance position at Mexico Trading Weight Bowl. Uh, so I walked into another uh, dynamic team of people and you know, um, fitted in quite well uh, and I was there for a good six years and uh, at some point I decided I felt like I needed change, I needed change and then after six years I then um, got an opportunity to um, join the Steel Tube Export Council. So you had left and it's not like you just entered into, got this, that position that yes, you're yes, currently yes. in. So, so, yeah, so I, I was at a point in, in, in my life where I wouldn't advise anybody to do it, but um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I took a risk. I said, listen, you know, I'd like to go into agriculture and venture into you know, farming and all that. And that's what I said I'm going to do. So I worked out a two months notice with, with, with the, my, my employer uh, during that time. And I left. I, I didn't know where I was going to. It was just a leap of faith. Yeah, I left. I don't know what was going to happen. My chankura and I in the bank, it could sustain me for maybe a year. And I thought, ah, figure it out. the Lord will provide. <laughs> So I spoke to my two stakeholders, which was uh, my girlfriend, now wife, Monene. I said, Monene, you know, this is what I'm going through. Um, yeah, 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 these are my reasons. I think that she understood. And I spoke to my mother mm. and the government. <laughs> I spoke to the government and the government understood. Right. And the government always supports you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, I think even if things were in pear shaped, you know? Definitely. The government would give me sasanya yeah. to sustain me. <laughs> <laughs> I would get a grant somehow. I forgot. There's always, you know, the government is very important. You know, there's always home. Like, you, know, you can pack up and go mm. home. Yeah. So you know, to have that um, okay, that net, that on. net. Yeah. Uh, but I, I knew things would improve. I, I didn't know how. So yeah, off I went. I'm in, unemployed. And the minute, the minute I finished. If I was to Cape Town to go visit my nene, I'm like, I'm on a month's holiday, rent, I'm unemployed. I was only unemployed for a month, and then the office started coming in. <laughs> but no, good to me, we hear you've left the steel industry, how about this and that and that and that. So of all the offers that I considered, I only took up one, and this, was, this one came from the Steel Tube Export Council. Mm. And um, the beauty about it is that I've give, been given an, an opportunity to work, I'm still within the steel industry, but in a different capacity and at a different level. Mm. I would be working at the highest level of, um, of, of the industry and actually assisting industry in, um, in, 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 in many reforms, you know, making sure that there's transformation within the steel industry, ensuring that um, there's this sustainable work for our local steel tube and pipe manufacturers, ensuring that skills and development filter all the way from a tertiary level right down to the industry and to make sure that we have a competitive um, steel tube and pipe industry that enables us to export, that enable us to, um, what do you say, like education, all those, all those key sort of government objectives that we need to take sort of to in our national development plan. Mm. And yeah, we were ticking those boxes and yeah. it was nice. Yeah. Dealing with the right people. Must be, yeah. Hey, ministers, that kind of level. Hey! Carter! Hey! Carter! 
even getting to travel the world. That was the beauty about it. You get yeah. to travel the world, see different perspectives, see how uh, industries are run overseas and stuff, and try to relate it to South Africa, see where uh, we've got shortcomings and how we can uh, basically uh, close the gap on, on our uh, um, 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 uh, challenges. On, on our challenges and um, basically instill best practice in the South African sector. Mm. So oh, it's, so it's, it's been awesome, it's been fulfilling. Um, yes, you know, um, our industry is in, is, is, is in um, a, a, a very difficult position currently. So is the whole economy. But, mm. you know, they've still got green shoes. They still green shoes that we leverage on and so okay. on. And we just, yeah, we keep our head down, shoulders to the wheel, and we just, we just do what we can. And, yeah, we don't focus on high-hanging fruits. We focus on those low-hanging ones. And yeah, yeah. by focusing on those low, low, low hanging ones, we've been able to achieve quite a lot actually for our members. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's always fantastic when a band comes together. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's quite a journey. <laughs> no, I've been blessed. I've been truly blessed. Mm. You know, I've appreciated all the opportunities. You know, there's so many people that um, uh, I owe a lot to. You know, I remember just starting to make steel. I mean, when I got my first Conti suit, I mean, I started. In the, in the in the plant, you know, contestu boots, hard hats, whatever, and you just worked your way up because there was an intensive program. But every person that you meet along the way taught you what they were specialists in, right? And you know, you took it all in, you took it all in, you took mm. it all in. So eventually, the sum of all that is what I am today. Mm. Today, you know, I'm so I'm so grateful to so many people. And even now, you know, I can still go back to Max Steel. I've got a very good relationship with the people there. And the people that you see, you know, 10 years later, who are still there, you still record, hey, KM, whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. And each and every one of them played a part in, in, in what you have now. Right. You know, in what you have. And, you know, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. I'm very appreciative of that. And then now, I would want to be sort of that beacon of hope to other young black uh, sort of professionals coming up in our industry to say and also be able to impart what I've learned with them. Mm. You know what I mean? You know. I'm not gonna hold what I know. I'm just gonna share it. Mm. Share it. That's beautiful. Oh yes. no, it, you guys are blowing it out of proportion. <laughs> No, please, guys, don't blow it out of proportion. You know, you know. <laughs> when are people retweeting you? Hey, black excellence! Yeah, it's our turn now. Are uh, you oh, not the beacon of hope, though? Yes, but you know, hey, hey maybe yes. I don't like the public. Maybe let's, the public. Let's, <laughs> let's, it makes me shy. Maybe it makes me shy. You're an excellent person. Thank you. Oh, my head. <laughs> That's how they go, you know, hear me out. You came from marketing. First of all, you chose it. Cousin Jay, it was the popular thing. It was the popular thing. <laughs> but you excelled in it. Yeah. That the opportunities that came after were decent opportunities. One shouldn't be scared of asking for help. That's one thing I've always never been um, scared of asking mm. for help. You can't know anything. Mm. Can't, there's nothing worse than being in your little cocoon or no, that's could be too so here yeah, because they're gonna think I'm stupid or something like that. Hey, you put up your hands, you make the call. If they had it their way, their daughters, their daughters, yo, they'd let their daughters marry me. <laughs> Every one of them you want to know. I don't want to know. Why mother? 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 Yes, it actually it, it actually showed me how much money I was blowing. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> so it actually showed how much money no. I was blowing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, frivolously, frivolously. Mm. But and then for the first time, I had to say, no, no, you need to cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that, because this is like the package you've got now in the association, and you're gonna have to work around this. Nothing was ever structured. The only thing I knew is that I had I had to be somebody. <laughs> So maybe, maybe I'm not a good example of structure. No. <laughs> Visionary structure. It's not just going with the floor. Sure, I think it's very important to have this point of view. Because I think there is also a particular point of view to 
um, success and it's very limited and I love just hearing this the, the fact that there wasn't structure but where you are you're happy yes, with yes. you know yeah. and you worked hard to get where, where you are it may not have been a specific destination